types of economic activities. In this chart, it has been shown that economic activities are of three types, business, profession, employment. Now, we will understand the difference between business, profession and employment. Number one, mode of establishment. In case of business, it is the entrepreneur who decides to set up business and he may have to comply with some legal formalities to set up business. For example, if a person wants to set up a company, he will have to register the same with registrar of companies. In case of profession, membership of a professional body and certificate of practice is required. In case of employment, appointment letter is issued by the employer. Number two, nature of work. Business provides goods and services to the public. Professionals provide services to the people, for example, doctor consultancy. Employees has to perform work as per service contract. Third, qualification. To set up a business, no minimum qualification is required. For example, grocery shop. In case of profession, qualifications, expertise and training in specific field as prescribed by the professional body is a must. In case of employment, qualification and training are prescribed by the employer. For example, add in newspaper by the employer regarding a vacancy for the post of assistant with required qualification of BA plus computer diploma. Fourth, reward or return. In case of business, profit earned is the return. In case of profession, professional fees is charged from the clients. In case of employment, salary or wages are given to employees. Fifth, capital investment. In case of business, capital investment required depends on size and nature of business. For example, shop versus mall. In case of profession, limited capital is required to start profession. Or in case of employment, no capital is required by the employee. Sixth, risk. In case of business, profits are uncertain and irregular. Risk is present. In case of profession, professional fee is generally regular and certain. Limited risk is there. In case of employment, employee gets fixed and regular pay. No risk is there. Seventh, transfer of interest. In case of business, transfer of interest is possible with some formalities. In case of profession, transfer of interest is not possible. In case of employment, it is not possible for an employee to transfer his job to another person. Eight, code of conduct. In case of business, no code of conduct is prescribed. In case of profession, professional code of conduct is to be followed. In case of employment, norms of behavior laid down by the employer are to be followed. Ninth, example. Example of business is shop, factory. Examples of profession are legal, medical profession, chartered accountancy. Examples of employment are jobs in banks, insurance companies, government department. This chart shows the objectives of business in pictorial form. Now we will discuss each objective one by one. Objectives of business. Whenever a person starts business, his sole objective is not to earn profit. He has number of objectives in his mind. If a person follows only one objective, say profit maximization, he cannot succeed in the long run as he may neglect all other responsibilities towards customers, employees, investors and society at large. This may result in non-cooperation or even opposition from the affected people against the malpractices of the business enterprise. So a businessman may have many objectives in his mind as per his goals and aspirations. 
Following is the list of few objectives of business. There may be many other objectives as well. Number one, profit earning. Profit earning is necessary for survival and growth of business. Profit should be reasonable. It cannot be the sole objective. Otherwise, the businessman will ignore other objectives which he cannot afford in the present day competitive world. <coughs> Second, innovation. Innovation means introduction of new ideas or methods in the way something is done or made. Any modification in the existing product to enhance its operation also means innovation. If a business does not adopt modern technology and upgrade its products and services, that business is bound to suffer in the long run. For example, in India, Nokia mobiles were very popular at certain point of time, but they lag behind Samsung in innovation. And after that, Oppo and Vivo have captured a good market share as they launched mobiles with new features. Third, market spending. Maintaining goodwill and reputation of business is very important. <laughs> Sorry. A business must aim at standing on stronger footing in comparison with competitors. It can do so by offering competitive products at reasonable prices to its customers and providing service to them to their satisfaction. Fourth, increase in productivity. Increase in productivity means minimum input and maximum output. This is possible by ensuring minimum wastage. Business has the objective of optimum utilization of physical and financial resources. Fifth, social responsibility. It means the obligation of every individual or company to contribute resources for solving social problems. We all get raw materials or resources etc. from society. So we should also give something in return to the society. It was earlier voluntary, now legally binding. India is one of the few countries that has made CSR activity for big companies a mandatory. CSR that is corporate social responsibility puts legal obligation to do something towards society welfare. If a business has a particular turnover, then 2% of 3 years average net profit has to be spent by a business organization on poor students and society welfare. Tata Group is perhaps the most CSR active company in India. It has undertaken initiatives in the field of education, agriculture, environment, sports, healthcare, etc. Other companies like Reliance, ITC, Wipro, Infosys, Ultratech Cement, etc. are also contributing a lot towards CSR. Next, welfare of employees. Business has the objective to take steps for welfare of employees as well as development of workers which results into sincerity, commitment and loyalty of employees towards organization. For example, some welfare measures include group life insurance, education facility for children of employees, transport facility for employees, free meal facility, etc. Development of workers can be achieved by training of employees. Thanks for watching. If you like our course, please spare some time to give a star rating to our course.